As you may recall, hash tables allow us to store elements in constant time with respect to the number of elements. However, in order to maintain this fast performance, we need to make sure that our hash table has a bunch of empty space, which can be quite wasteful in terms of memory consumption. And sometimes this might be prohibitively large for whatever context we might be facing. So the Bloom filter is a similar data structure in, in concept, but it's actually a probabilistic data structure, which it's memory efficient. So it takes far less memory than a hash table. And it's probabilistic in that we're not necessarily 100% sure of what's in the data structure. So specifically, a Bloom filter does not have any false negatives. If a Bloom filter tells you this element does not exist, the element definitely does not exist. However, a Bloom filter can only tell you this element might exist. It can never tell you a for sure this element definitely does exist. So a Bloom filter can tell you this element does not exist, but it can only tell you this element might exist in terms of a positive. So what is a Bloom filter? A Bloom filter is essentially a hash table of Booleans, but really, we can think of this as a Boolean vector. So I've drawn it as a bunch of falses in an array of length five, but really in practice, you would use a bit set. So you would probably stick in eight bits per byte, but either way, we have some list of Booleans and we need to define multiple hash functions. So K is the number of hash functions and M is the number of slots in our array. So it's the number of bits in our bit set. And these two values are two values that need to be designed, but let's just assume for now that we're given how many hash functions and we're given the length of the array. So given an element, if I wanna insert it into a Bloom filter, what I do is for each of my hash functions, I compute the hash value of that element, and then I mod it by the length of my bit set to find the proper index. And then I set each index that I get from each of these hash functions to true. So for example, let's try inserting 66 into this Bloom filter. So I've defined three hash functions. The first one just returns the ASCII value of the element. The next one returns two plus the ASCII value of the element. And the third one returns four times the ASCII value of the element. So if I'm doing B, the ASCII value of B is 66. 66 mod five is one. So I would set this index to true. Then for the second hash function, two plus the ASCII value of B would be 68, two plus 66, 68 mod five, the length of my array is three. So I would set index three to true as well. Then my third hash function is four times the ASCII value. So four times 66, 66 times four is 24, 24, 25. There we go. Either way, I guess I didn't really have to compute this part. Oops, uh, this is not, this is 26. By the way, so four times 66 mod five would be four. So index four also gets set to true. So to insert an element, compute its hash value using each of the hash functions and for each of those hash values, mod it by the length of the array and set the corresponding index to true. So now what if I want to see if D exists in this hash, uh, in this Bloom filter? D, I would look at the first hash function. So for an element to, yeah, let, let's actually try it. So D, the ASCII value is 68, 68 mod five is three. So, huh, that bit is true. Maybe D exists in this Bloom filter. Let me try the next one. 68 plus two is 70, mod five is zero. 
index zero is false. If D actually existed in this Bloom filter, my insertion would have set this index to true. So the fact that this index is false means D definitely does not exist in my Bloom filter. So I can confidently say with 100% confidence, D is not in this Bloom filter. What would happen if I looked for the character L? So L, the hash value, uh, sorry, the ASCII value of L is 76. So let's see, 76 mod five is one. Oh, that's true. Okay, 76 plus two is 78 mod five is three. Huh, that's also true. 76 times four, let's see. So this is 76 times four is Four, two, 28, 30. Hopefully I did my math right, but regardless, mod five is four, which is also true. So each hash function that I used on element L, the corresponding index was true. Huh. So it seems to me as if L could theoretically exist in this Bloom filter, even though in reality, I know that the only element that I inserted was B. So this is an example of a false positive. My Bloom filter said, hey, I don't know, maybe L exists. I have no way of knowing otherwise. So to briefly summarize, it's memory efficient. I can design this bit set to be much smaller than the number of elements that I want to store. And if an element, so if my Bloom filter tells me something doesn't exist, that thing definitely, definitely, definitely does not exist. But my Bloom filter cannot tell me if something definitely does exist. Sometimes it might think that something exists when it really doesn't. So I can get false positives. It might say, hey, yeah, this could theoretically exist when it really doesn't, but I never have false negatives.